Hi, and welcome back. So now it's about the discussion section. The discussion is usually considered the most difficult part to write in your thesis, and it's true. I mean, that really requires some creativity. Now you really need to think about what you want to write into your discussion section, and you've got a lot of freedom for that, but it also takes quite a bit of your creativity to really get this done well. So here are a few things that should definitely go into that discussion section. Usually you start with a more general conclusion than what you have done during the results section. In the results you have been providing immediate conclusions to the experimental results that you have obtained. But now the discussion you would usually start with a more general statement of what you think the major conclusion from your results could be. So it's a general conclusion. So when writing this, you could also think about whether you might want to illustrate that general conclusion. Maybe you could include a graphical presentation of what, of what you think might be going on in the cell or in an organism that you have been studying. Maybe you do one of these graphical abstracts that would include uh, colorful easter eggs representing proteins or arrows representing signaling pathways. I mean you can't always do that but sometimes it's possible and you should definitely think about doing that because it's a very nice way to communicate very directly to the reader what you think the general conclusion could be. So think about inserting a graphical abstract at this point. So once you're done with that, the next question is whether or not your findings are in agreement with the available literature, with papers that may have appeared while you were working on your thesis or that have even been known before you started. So the comparison with the literature is an important point to make. So the comparison with the literature can have two outcomes. Either you agree with the literature or otherwise obviously you may also disagree with the literature and both is perfectly fine you know there's nothing wrong with disagreeing with the literatures and both can have its more or less comfortable aspects so if you agree with the literature then that's fine because in a way it confirms what you have been finding but on the other hand it also means that perhaps your results are not new anymore so in that case the question is if you agree with the available literature what's new in your study what is new and perhaps there are still some aspects in your work that really are new and those you should now emphasize in that part of the discussion on the other hand maybe you find something that would contradict something that has been published before and then the question is okay you disagree your findings are different from what they have been fi finding uh, but why is that so that's something that should go to the discussion uh, perhaps you have been working in with different systems different cells or different organisms or perhaps they are wrong but if you think that they are really wrong you must give good reasons why you think they are wrong. Don't just call them stupid because that won't look good obviously. You must uh, try to find very good reasons why you think you are right and they are wrong. So much for the comparison with the literature. Having done that you may also consider doing what you are only supposed to do with uh, caution and that is to speculate. Perhaps you have more far-reaching conclusions and at this point you can raise them, you can at least raise hypotheses about what you think might be going on even if you can't prove them. As long as you call things speculations you are allowed to speculate. So more far-reaching implications. Perhaps not implications but just hypotheses. 
So that you can raise in the discussion section. And especially in a bachelor or master thesis, it's not uncommon at all that you end this by saying, okay, this would be interesting if I have more time. I would now do this and that experiment to further follow up on such hypotheses. So what you could do is to provide an outlook and suggest more experiments that uh, could be done to further corroborate your assumptions and your hypotheses. So that's what I can suggest for setting up your discussion section. I hope it's going to work. Good luck with it. And uh, see you again, if you want, with the acknowledgement section. Thank you.